everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for a brand new Cloud Tank episode in our podcast series. For those of you who are watching live, hello. Um, today we have my colleague here, Zishan. How are you? Good. How are you? And I'm what's your good. name, by the way? My name's Joanna, <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't so, know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah, I mean... Um, Finally, this week, we are like almost uh, halfway through it. Yeah. And time is passing pretty quickly. Summer is going I know. very fast. I know. And, uh, I feel like the new year was just around a corner. And now it's already almost six months into the year. It's crazy. Yeah. And we are like, um, uh, you know, busy in the work and uh, yeah. uh, working with the, all the cool technologies and stuff. You know? Exactly. It's always fun. Um, so what we are talking about today? Yeah, today we are talking about architecting an application in the cloud. As we know, a strong foundation is critical when building an application so that there aren't any problems and loopholes. So today we're going to be talking about the essentials when building an application. So for those of you who haven't started building yet or in the process of creating an application, we're going to bring up some important points and questions that you'll definitely want to review during this process. Uh, so the first point we're going to talk about is having a strong ops team, having a strong operations team, because we know it's important in order to run workloads efficiently. Could you elaborate a little bit more, Z, on why it's important to have a strong operations in place? Yeah, so the, uh, just to add to your points, like what we are talking about today. So we are talking yeah. about like when you are uh, adopting cloud and designing application to the cloud, what are the things you have to keep in mind? You mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, what is your starting points and what things you should consider doing it. Mm -hmm. And when you're designing applications, uh, there is a little bit difference between designing for on-prem versus the cloud applications. Mm -hmm. So that's what we are talking about here, like mm -hmm. uh, how to utilize cloud to full its potential instead yeah. of like just cloning what you already have on-prem. So whenever you are designing new application or, uh, you know, migrating to the cloud, these are, you know, five different pillars to consider when you, um, you know, move to the cloud. So this is what we call it like architecting for the cloud. Mm -hmm. So the first point you said is having a strong DevOps team is very critical because clouds, the main benefit of the cloud is agility, you know, uh, move fast move efficiently and if you have a strong operations team you know uh, that will actually add very value it will be very valuable for you like to have mm -hmm. a strong foundation where you know okay you have uh, expectations and everything is set up uh, you know running smoothly <laughs> so yeah. having a strong strong uh, ops team is critical yeah. and so that gives you, you know, it will support your development. It will support your workloads running efficiently. Mm -hmm. You can have insights in your operations. And you know, like when you're monitoring things, how things mm -hmm. are running in the cloud or uh, how your teams are working together. When you have those insights, you can actually improve that process as well over time. Yeah. So, and that's actually add value to your business. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure it helps with deployment as well, right? Getting things out for customers' needs. Um, so that's great. The next thing, which I believe is something that should be considered even before starting the application or talking or in the planning phase, is security. Um, could we touch a little bit on security and why it's important to consider before um, developing your application? Yeah, before security, I just want to touch a few oh, more yeah. things uh, on the operations side. Like, mm -hmm. um, so how can you make it efficient operations, you know? Yeah. So basically, we talked about in, in our previous podcast as well, infrastructure as code. Yeah. And, you know, configuration management, these type of tools, if you incorporate those tools, mm -hmm. that would help you to automate a lot of uh, manual things that you you used to do basically mm -hmm. uh, i've seen in my experience when you're working with the uh, on-prem applications for example or large corporate there are a lot of manual steps involved but when you're going to the cloud uh, things are you know uh, 
what you can say like uh, uh, your services can die anytime you know uh, you have to make that expectation okay my my virtual machine if it's running in the cloud it could you know uh, uh, stop anytime so you have to design for failure mm -hmm. um so having like infrastructure as code and configuration management in place would give you like um, that smooth operations that we we talked about earlier mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. also having a small code changes more pushing to the production uh, i think as what i've heard netflix amazon google apple these type of companies they're pu pushing code changes to production every 10 seconds or 30 oh, wow. seconds you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there are like a lot of deployments is automatically going a lot yeah. of organizations it's 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 too much for them uh, but uh, at least you should have like some kind of a pipeline where you know okay what is my processes how to uh, set the proper expectations and everything kind of automate so if you have a small changes going into the production these are kind of more manageable mm -hmm. and uh, also you can have changes reversible for example if the if you move the code to the production and something bad happened if you mm -hmm. have efficient operations you can always roll back to the previous state that you right. uh, you you're happy with it for example you have a website and you said okay let's change the color from green to blue Mm -hmm. And your customer says, oh, we don't like blue. You can easily revert back to the green without right, the doing anything state. major. So that's yeah. the easily easy way to. Plus, again, uh, you anticipate for the failure, like I said earlier, that if, if, you, if you're designing for the cloud, anticipate that your services will fail. So you should have like a proper uh, plan in place, okay, how to actually go roll back your change or, you know, fix the change. Mm -hmm. and so these are like uh, key principles you can say for efficient operations. So, yeah, sorry okay. to cut you off, but <laughs> that no, was, no, no, it's important I wanted to sure. cover that as well. Yeah. Um, so in security, what are some practices users and developers, I'm sorry, the developers can take in order to make sure that there's a strong um you know, strong security before the application's even built out? Yeah, so understanding of a shared security model in the cloud is very important. So when you're like working in the cloud, know, know that, okay, what, what is your responsibility? Uh, and uh, there are like two things, like security of the cloud and security in the cloud. Mm -hmm. So of the cloud is basically responsibility of the cloud provider, like the data center, physical servers, and all these things, electricity and the physical security of the cloud uh, services. Uh, but uh, uh, the data in the cloud actually is your responsibility. If you upload your, <laughs> your critical files to a public uh, bucket, anybody can download it. So... The, it's right. your responsibility to make sure that you have proper security in place. So understanding of the shared security model is critical. Uh, that could be the first step. Okay. And uh, what is missing mostly what, uh, like most of the customers comes to us, what I've seen the, uh, is that uh, they don't consider security as the first thing mm. uh, when they uh, implement and there could be many reasons, but uh, I would suggest having a security specialist when you're going to the cloud and you have critical data, for example, you're protecting PHI, PII, uh, that type of data, mm -hmm. uh, then having a security specialist, uh, you know, in your team is very critical, uh, who can, um, you know, the security architect who can, who can see like, okay, how you have, you are designing things. Right. So monitor. having a yeah monitor, all the tools are in place or not. Uh, uh -huh. So make sure um, uh, the principles you can say uh, for designing security is like uh, make sure you have the uh, strong identity, like who is actually accessing your data and connecting. You have strong authorization, like if the user really needs that information or not, like. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, you can also have uh, traceability, like who has access to that information, who had access. So you can always go back and check um, and make sure the security is applied at every layer. Like uh, also data in transit at rest is secure. 
So mm -hmm. transit is like moving one data from one place to another, uh, make sure that is secure, address where the data is actually stored, like your databases, your S3 buckets, and things like that. Uh, make sure you have encryption enabled so it's secure in that way. Um, and also you should, uh, you know, have, um, you know, days where you can actually test your security. So usually uh, people call it like game days and things mm -hmm. like that, where you, you check all your architecture, okay, if it's really working or not. Yeah. But um, you, you should also prepare for it, like make sure monitor like what what's happening in the world of security what mm -hmm. are the recent vulnerabilities are mm -hmm. exposed in your code or somewhere else so make sure you protect um so apply security at every layer for example if your mm -hmm. application running in the cloud make sure uh, it's starting from the user to your uh, environment to your network to your database to your protocols and everywhere is um, you know you consider security Okay, yeah, so considering that all states needs to be secure. What about reliability? You know, asking questions like, is this app performing the way we needed to for our customers? And is this an application that's going to work long term? Um, what can we do in terms of reliability to make sure that this is a long lasting application? Yeah, reliability is the benefit of the cloud computing and again like mm -hmm. uh, uh, like I said when you're designing your applications to the cloud for the cloud uh, make sure design for failure so you you know mm -hmm. like okay it could fail any th time you know expect a failure and cloud is like you usually give you flexibility to spin up services on demand Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the one of the benefit, like a uh, reliability of it. Um, and reliability, the uh, principles for reliability, I would say mm -hmm. it's like uh, you design that you all automatically recover from failure. For example, if you have uh, two virtual machines running in the cloud and one of it's died for, for, mm -hmm. for any reason, uh, it automatically spins up another uh, copy of, of the same server. Right. So your operations never interrupt you uh, and if if your traffic has like you your website gets a lot of traffic for example your applications it's automatically add more instances to it and so you get like expectations your you meet your expectations your slas so make sure you consider reliability like um, what basically your customers are expecting if they are expecting for example this service to respond within like uh, 10 milliseconds, for example. So make sure you have considered that when you're designing for the app, you know, for the cloud. Okay, yes. And for performance efficiency, we know that that is important, making sure that the application is running efficiently and it's using the necessary computing resources to perform at its prime. Um, what are some ways we can ensure that everything is running smoothly and giving um, the customers the best experience? Yeah, um, again, uh, cloud uh, gives you flexibility that you can go global in minutes. Mm -hmm. If your, for example, customers are in Asia or, or in Europe, make sure you, you keep your data closer to your, your, your customers. So, and also, for example, if people are accessing, you know, your application from uh, Asia, for example, they don't have to call the internet and come all the way to North America to access your application and it right. takes latency. So having a, uh, applications running closer to your customers give them a better experience. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, cloud basically provide you that flexibility. You can go global in minutes mm -hmm. and, um, you know, add more capacity on demand mm -hmm. or automatically set up uh, you know, auto scaling and all these type of rules right. where you can meet your ex customers' ex ex expectations. Right. Also, there are like uh, services which which give you guaranteed the performance. Like, okay, uh, for example, how much uh, uh, throughput the services would provide you. So, and uh, the the for example, the edge computing and CDN, these type of services you you could could also 
consider when you're designing for, you know, for the cloud. Okay. Okay. And when it comes to optimizing cost, you know, we want to deliver high performing applications that provide the most value while also staying within the budget. What are some ways we can do that as developers, yeah. businesses? Yeah. Architect and business people, um, cost is very critical for any business. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, people, uh, companies want to save money to get more profit and all these things and a cloud uh, uh, like it goes basically it becomes like operation operational cost instead of capital expenditure now you are paying as as you use you know right. the service so pay as you go like if you're using 10 services you pay for the 10 services if you're using one service you, you're paying for one service but uh, you should have like some kind of uh, uh, model where you can actually track what what is happening in the cloud basically what services you are using mm. if uh, you really need those services or not or maybe mm -hmm. uh, you were doing some kind of proof of concept and you forgot to turn off the service that is also right. happened so um having what are some a, oh i'm yeah. sorry what are some tools that people can use or some products that are available where they can keep track of all of those is so every cloud provider provides you like some basic tooling where you can see the cost consumption okay. uh, with every services. But uh, there are also like uh, different services uh, uh, also available. Uh, uh, you can have custom solutions as well. Mm. Uh, but mostly is like uh, you can set up budgeting alerts like if the if the cost goes over, for example, fifteen thousand dollars, you you get a mm -hmm. notification or something mm -hmm. like that. You can automate procedures like, okay, um, for example, uh, you can set auto scaling groups where you have, for example, scale up and down based on the demand of mm -hmm. your network. Okay. For example, if thousand. Uh, if your CPU load is more than 80 percent, you you need more virtual machines. But if your CPU uh, is less than thirty percent, you don't need it. So it uh, you can set rules like that. Okay. Also, for example, resources that you don't need. For example, development right. environment after five p.m. If no n nobody works till the next morning, you can shut down automatically those services. And mm -hmm. next morning, when the developers come to work they can they can have like services ready for them so you can save some cost based on that so um also uh, it's kind of experiment as well uh, you mm -hmm. don't have to like uh, uh you know uh go for one services okay we we have picked this service this is the way to go always look for okay is this the right services is it uh, meeting our expectations or not and you can always change your approach when working with the cloud. So always be open to experiment that I would say, like if you're using, for example, uh, EC2 services um, in AWS, can we use, replace this with the Lambda services? Can we save some money instead of running EC2 24 by seven? Can we use Lambda services and pay for only we, we use? So, and that's it for today's episode. If you'd like, like to learn more on a specific topic, we'll leave our contact details and social media profiles in the description notes. And we'll see you next week.